So you chose to remember. <sighs> I shall respect your decision. What does he mean? <sighs> Did the three of you return in time without me? What happened? Let us just say that we had a falling out. What? But you can rest assured, I have not given up on our goal of defeating the Realm Scourge. Then what do you intend to do? It is impossible to move the hearts of men merely with vague utterances of fear and despair. Then you intend to spread the word of the Realm Scourge's existence far and wide? Indeed I do. I see. And I shall do so, no matter how much you protest. We have also considered that approach, of course. But there is a reason we cannot follow through with it. And what, pray tell, is that reason? I saw the future that decision brings about. As knowledge of the Realm Scourge's existence and the fear it inspires spread, people fell into a state of panic. It is only to be expected, mind you. The Realm Scourge is a weapon that can wipe out entire nations in but one night. Not only is it capable of unparalleled destruction, it inspires chaos and confusion, instilling nightmares in the hearts of the living. In the future I saw, the people created a terrifying weapon of their own to fight back with. A weapon to defeat the Realm Scourge? Yes. The Mornblade, forged by Misachika. So you hesitate to spread the word of the Realm Scourge's existence in fear that it will inspire the creation of this Morn Blade? Precisely. Uh, uh, uh! Exia! What in heavens just happened to you? You saw it too, didn't you? Tell me, Exia. What did you see just now? Uh, it was a, a future so terrifying I wish I could not recall. The creation of the Mornblade spurned the Realm Scourge to become something even more dreadful. An endless cycle of killing went on and on, raising not just these lands, but even spreading to the total destruction of other planets. Unbelievable! It is for that very reason we refer to the Realm Scourge only as a great threat when dealing with the general populace. Of course, the future that Amnalus and Exia have seen may not be set in stone. Our actions and behavior affect the future in all manner of ways. However... Your crystal's light grows dimmer. Yes, that's right. It only has a small amount of magic left in it. Which means we can no longer turn back time anymore. So the next deaths we meet will be our final, actual deaths. I'm afraid so. And not just ours, but that of all the people of Ardra. Knowing this, do you still intend to carry out your plan? Well... We cannot just leave the Realm Scourge sealed away in that cavern forever. That we cannot. Even though we possess eternal youth, it does not mean we are undying. 
Perhaps we should steer the course of the future so that the Mornblade is never forged. Make the existence of the Realm Scourge common knowledge while preventing the creation of the blade. Can it be done? If you permit Exia and I to keep our eternal youth, then I think it can be achieved. Is that so? I shall see to the founding of an arms dealer's guild to monitor the activities of all the weaponsmiths. An arms dealer's guild, you say? The looming threat of the Realm Scourge is what puts the creation of the Mornblade into motion. But I believe we can use the very knowledge of that great threat to instead unite the people of Ardra. Once Ardra is united, conflicts will become less frequent, and the need for large amounts of arms will become reduced. Which in turn will make it easier to keep track of the weaponsmiths. What do you think, Amnilus? The plan does have a certain logic to it. Allow me to ask you this instead. Do you have any better strategies at this point? <sighs> As it seems you do not, I shall pursue my course then, even if it costs me my life. And should you wish to stop me, then I suggest you just cut me down. <sighs> Wait! According to Amnalus's premonition, the Mornblade shall be forged some 80 years from now. I shall bear that in mind, and thank you. It is good to see you all again at long last. We were starting to think that you'd been spending so much time in that cathedral of yours that we'd become a distant memory. I could never forget about any of you. <laughs> Twas but a jape. Just thought if we didn't knock you back to size, we might not ever see you again. But Brother Sodaly, if you wish for us to gather, would it not be better to meet in the church? I am sorry, but there is little time for that. Please, allow me to speak to you all here. There is a great threat about to engulf all the lands of Ardra. A great threat? Please do not frighten us so, Brother Sodaly. This threat is known as the Realm Scourge. This fearful entity can incinerate whole villages and forests and devour people as if they are nothing. Over a hundred soldiers could attack it all at once, but it would be to no avail. <coughs> Brother Sodaly! Why would you tell us such a terrible thing? Can't you see everyone trembles in fear now? It is the truth that I speak unto you. Th the truth? But... The Realm Scourge will scorch the Earth across all of Ardra. And not a single soul shall survive in the wake of its destruction. What do we do? Surely ye don't mean for us to sit around waiting for this monster to kill us. <sighs> Say something, Brother Sodaly! Tell us how we can be saved! There is only one road to salvation. What would you have us do? 
We must bring more followers into the light of our crystal faith and construct more churches. Aren't there enough churches already? Why, the neighboring village just finished building theirs the other day! We still need many, many more. But why could you need so many? The more followers we gather, the more we shall be able to influence the leaders of the Great Houses. <sighs> the reason the rulers of each country do not take us seriously is because we do not have many believers behind us. However, if we build churches, spread the teachings of God throughout each nation, and convert the majority of their populations, then they shall lend ear to what we have to say, eh? Precisely. But wait, so you told us that tale of the great monster to motivate us then? No, that was no tall tale. What I told you was the God-honest truth. We had her reservations about using the existence of this great threat to increase the following of our faith, but we no longer have the luxury of choice. The great houses continue to sate their selfish desires with their ongoing wars. But now is the time we must unite and stand together as one against the realm scourge. For it is the only way we shall ever save Ardra. It may take years, possibly even decades, to achieve. Yet we have no choice but to carry out this task. So let us get to work, for it is we who shall open the door to a brighter future. destined to die a horrid death. That, that is not true, my love. Then what would ye have me do? There is no escaping what comes for us. <laughs> oh. What are you moping around in here for? I should just spare myself and the child I carry in my womb from such a terrible future. Don't utter such a thing. But... Have you forgotten? Brother Sodaly has shown us the way to salvation. We should be out spreading the crystal faith to every corner of Ardra. So let us focus on that. I'm not saying it'll be easy going. But if we do our part, then your baby and all the others to come after it might have a happy future. Oh. For the sake of our unborn baby. Aye, and for the sake of all our children. Well, if ye put it like that... Let us go out there and spread the word! Everyone, I need your help! Long have I preached that you should love your neighbor and lend a hand to those less fortunate amongst you. But there is more that is required of us. A threat like nothing we have seen before shall soon arise here in Ardra. It is essential that we come together and stand united. Let us cast off all hatred and forget any animosities we harbor. For the sake of those who you love, let us share in God's teachings and take action in the name of our future. Hey, here. What? You mean about the Church of the Crystal? Yeah, they say that the King shall meet with that Father Sodom someday soon. Well, I guess it was only a matter of time.
Thanks to everyone's efforts, the Church of the Crystal grows ever larger. In fact, our numbers grow so great that the kings of the great houses can no longer ignore us. But I fear that numbers alone shall not be enough for us to establish a solid union. For that is not so different from using military might to suppress one's opponents. Hearts filled with love for Ardra are what is essential. Compassion for those you live alongside. Let us continue to work hand in hand, so that all people may equally achieve blessedness! I cannot believe how many people have gathered here. Suddenly, everyone is waiting to hear you speak. Yes, of course. Welcome to our blessed cathedral! We all know that the Realm Scourge is a fearsome entity that scorches the Earth and devours all in its path. However, at this very moment, I have great confidence. I believe we shall defeat the Realm Scourge. Why, you may ask? It is because we have come together as one united people! If it isn't King Elda of Leonis I see before me. In the flesh. You set foot in the lands of Leonis without permission. An act I deem to be one of aggression. Under no circumstances can we overlook such a trespass. Even if the perpetrators vastly outnumber us. You have our deepest apologies for this intrusion. But the truth of our presence is... We have indeed heard those rumors of what lies deep in the cavern beneath our land. I promise that once this great threat has been dealt with, our army shall promptly withdraw. 
So please, allow us to pass, Your Majesty. This threat you speak of... Do you truly believe you are capable of defeating it? I do indeed. I, for one, am not convinced. What do you think, my sons? I too think they are lacking somewhat. And I agree with my brother. Leonis may indeed be a small kingdom. But even we could take on the likes of this army. Are you implying that we must use force against you if we wish to proceed? Indeed. Successfully break through the wall that is Leonis, and we shall forgive your trespass. Are you sure you wish to do this? It will only bring about the needless loss of life. Ha! <laughs> An invader that worries about those he invades. Perhaps you will realign your concerns upon seeing this. What in the heavens? Three rings in the hands of Leonis? Damn that Gilgamesh! He decides to obstruct me now! At such a crucial time! Come and face the Mars of Leonis! The united army of Ardra lives up to all expectations. I did not sense any real intent to kill in your attacks against us. What is going on here? Do not tell me this was Gilgamesh's way of testing us. When the Winged One bestowed the rings upon my sons and I, he told us, You must test the might of Sadali's forces when they come to your land. <sighs> Unless that army possesses overwhelming power, you must not let them enter the cavern. But you have done well, Lord Sadali. You have indeed united the great houses of Ardra into one formidable force. So we have passed your test? Indeed. And we shall now guide you to the cavern. Naturally, Leonis shall also lend its forces to your cause and fight as one with the united army of Ardra. You have my heartfelt thanks. On this day, we put an end to the nightmare that has threatened us all for so long. We shall emerge victorious. Of that, I am certain. And together, we shall open the door to a brighter future. Time has come for us to face the Realm Scourge with the full force of the United Army of Ardra. Hexia, you came! And Thorbeck is with you too! But of course! My father, grandfather, and great grandfather have all faithfully served you, Lord Sodaly, and so shall I. In fact, the whole village is here in the rear guard and they're prepared to lay down their lives if needed. But we are all of one mind in our hope for the future of Ardra. 
Thank you, Thorbeck. And you as well, Exia. Today is the day that we destroy the Realm Scourge for the future! thing only just getting started? What in hell is going on? The seal that keeps the realm skirt suspended has just broke. But how could that happen? I am told that the Realm Scourge grows ferocious at the smell of blood. You don't mean... That titanic thing is going to start moving now! I am afraid so. Panic is spreading amongst the troops. I must go and assist them. Wait for me! No, Exia. You and Thorbeck must concentrate on getting the last of the villagers away from here! Even with this many soldiers, we fail to mortally wound it! This is hopeless! It wouldn't matter how many lives we had. Trying to face this monstrosity is a losing game! <laughs> it is not just the soldiers, but even my believers abandoned the battle. This is a complete and utter defeat. Perhaps I was never intended to be the vessel that saves this world, after all. Do not lose faith, Lord Sodaly! What are you two doing here? Why didn't we flee, you mean? We could not leave you to face such danger alone, Lord Sodaly. But what about the others? We guided all we could to safety. But that rotten Kuri blew up the cavern entrance, trapping us in here. No. He said that such a terrible monster couldn't be allowed to reach the surface. So now we can't flee, even if we wanted to. Which means we may as well die a noble death. I am sorry I dragged you into this. Don't say that, Lord Sodaly. My family has stuck by your side since the day my great-grandfather found you under attack by monsters on the shore near our old village. And the time we shared together has been a true joy. I have no regrets. Not one. Oh, Thorbeck. and run! But there is nowhere to run! The way out is blocked! At least try to get as far away from it as possible! <laughs> Gilgamesh! It's... God! What in the heavens are you doing here? I have opened the way out of the cavern. 
are you telling me to flee? There is no need for you to throw your life away here. It shall not matter even if we do escape this place. The Realm Scourge will eventually find its way to the surface and annihilate everything in its path. Besides... <sighs> what a terrible wound! I have a feeling my time is limited. I will not be able to outrun the Realm Scourge in this condition. So I shall make my final stand here. Here it comes! no magic left in it. We can no longer turn back time. Just give it to me! Quick! I... I shall make do. What? What do you mean to do? No, you mustn't! Don't do it, Exia! What you're doing will cost you your life! Sodily for me. It's almost upon us! Go now! Into the light! How did we get here? What in heaven's happened back there? So, you have maintained your memories then. It is not just you. Amla seems to have her memories fully intact as well. And yet, only Exia and I were touching the crystal when it activated. Mystery is the least of our worries! You told us that it was no longer possible to turn back time! So how is it that we are here? It was Exia's doing. She channeled her soul into the crystal. How could she do such a thing? We tried to stop her, but she was resolute in her decision. You tried to stop her? Did you really do so in earnest? 
Perhaps you merely allowed Exia to sacrifice herself so that you might find a way out of your peril! You doubt my motivations? No, you may do so if it pleases you. But know that Exia sacrificed herself to save you. Her dying words were for me to look after you. And just as she drew her last breath, she infused her life energy into this crystal. Her soul went into this crystal. My beloved Exia. <gasps> Gilgamesh. It cannot be. I sense it. The realm scourge. But how? We have turned back time. The Realm Scourge should still be sealed in suspended animation. I think I know what has happened. And the reason why Sonali and I have retained our memories despite not touching the crystal when time was turned back. The magical energy Exia's sacrifice provided was too powerful. Everyone who was enveloped by that brimming light was able to return through time, even if they weren't in direct contact with the crystal. Do you mean to say, the Realm Scourge's soul also traversed time with its memories intact? Yes. Its soul would have come back after being frenzied by all the blood from the battle, allowing it to break through the seal. Then we best make haste. This will probably be the last time we see one another. I want you to know. You have been a great friend. You are right. The seal has indeed been compromised. Never had I expected the end to come before we fulfilled our goal. But I shall say this. It has been a rather interesting life we have lived. Why? You sound like you're giving up. This is not a battle the two of us stand a chance of surviving. True. But even if we cannot defeat the Realm Scourge now, I am sure you will one day. And the best I can do is ensure it does indeed get left in the hands of the future. No, you cannot use your life for this. I am sorry I have to leave you on your own. But please, understand my decision. And someday, come for me when you are able. I shall be waiting for you. The cavern is going to come down on top of itself any moment now. Get out of here before that happens. for you. I promise.
Yet another failed attempt. That is the 23rd body so far. Using the villagers' cadavers in my experiments to resurrect the dead is proving to be a frustrating endeavor. At this rate, I do not know when I shall be able to resurrect Exia. If I fail to bring her back properly, I suppose she will likely rise up and attack me like that man's corpse just did. My dear Exia. Oh, how this world feels so empty without you. If I cannot resurrect her, perhaps I should try using part of her body to create her anew. We lost Exia and parted ways with Sodale. But never had I imagined I would lose you too, Amnilus. I knew I would not stand a chance against the Realm Scourge on my own. But it was then that I realized... Your mind still resided somewhere in the vastness of the Void. So I used most of what magical power I had left to create a vision of you. Yet this vision is blissfully oblivious, devoid of both smiles and humor. All it does is report the premonitions you sometimes have in the most laconic of ways. Perhaps the cryptic nature of your words is your way of telling me more than you are able. Oracle, Chapter 1, Passage 4, The Hour of the Dawn. Grant a light upon the stag lost in the darkness. Bestow another light upon the herd of resourceful sheep. Entrust your final light to the young lion, yet be forewarned. Two lions are like night and day, never to know one another. Their inevitable conflict shall create pools of blood that hasten the awakening of the great threat. Who do you think you are? You have little right to be giving us orders! Let's give them what for! Come on, lads! I suppose a display of power is where we must begin. Cease your strange mutterings and fight us! Strong. You have not to fear for me. I did not come here to bring you harm. I only wish to see the village of Leonis grow until it becomes a great kingdom. However, you must not succumb to selfish desires and invade other nations. 
And in turn, any invasion by the great houses must be met and repelled. Make our village a kingdom? I suppose it could be done, but... A tiny village like this wouldn't last long if a greater nation decided to attack. It is for that reason I shall bestow upon you this ring. Did they come from the ring? With this power, we'll be able to match any who try to invade us. But know that I have conditions. You must never allow this land to become a battlefield. Why is that, my lord? Blood spilled across these lands will call forth a great threat. To avoid this, there must only be one heir to the throne at any time. Should there be two successors, the nation will be torn asunder. Before that comes to pass, you must end the life of one of them. For the King of Leonis must serve as nothing but the guardian of this land. Your soul once dwelled within this crystal. But unlike its original fleshly vessel, it has now lost all warmth and become so hard and cold to the touch. I sometimes wish I too could become a crystal if it would take away this emptiness. If only I could refill this crystal with magical energy, then I just might be able to traverse time back to when you still lived, Exia. Perhaps it is indeed worth attempting. Gilgamesh. I have just come to pay my old friend a visit. You have nothing to fear. That crystal is no longer any use to me. Keep it as a memento of Exia, if it pleases you. How fares Amnilus? After you and I parted ways, I returned to the cavern to face the Realm Scourge with Amnilus at my side. The two of you stopped it, all on your own? Only thanks to Amnilis's actions. She assimilated herself with the Realm Scourge and encased their amalgamation in an enormous crystal in order to subdue it once again. Amnilis is now inside that crystal? How is that possible? I believe she saw it as the only measure left for us. One that was only possible due to the vast amount of magical energy that she herself possessed, I would say. Whatever you decide to do from here on out is no longer a matter of my concern. But know this. If you prove a hindrance to me, I will show you no compassion. Consider this a warning to an old friend. So, Amnilus' soul is inside an enormous crystal. Such a source of magic may just be the answer.